This is the Pod 20. I'm Graham Mack as I count down the top 20 podcasts based on downloads and your recommendations at thepodcastradio.co.uk. At 16, the harrowing. Interesting podcast, this. A once in a century storm hits a remote Scottish island. As the isolated community takes shelter, a barbaric crime sets off a chain of events which heralds the rise of an ancient evil and threatens to change the course of history. And Edward Woodward is burned alive inside a giant wicker man as Britt Eklund dances naked and she's got this weird dubbed Scottish accent which never makes... Oh, oh, wait a minute. No, I'm thinking of... I'm thinking of... Stop the bagpipes, for goodness sake! It's a different thing altogether. Jonathan Brandmeier is on Zoom in Chicago, and now you've got this new online show, which has gone global. We had one listener says here, uh, Johnny, you're live in London. Just let you know I'm hearing you loud and clear on my laptop in London. Great. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, they, they won't know the things you do. They won't know about the Hall of Fame. They won't know about 14 years at the Loop. We, they won't know about, they won't know that you appeared with Mary Tyler Moore in a TV movie. <laughs> Thank you. What was that like? That that was honestly, that was fantastic. I just enjoyed that immensely. And uh, she, I, I don't think anyone could be kinder than that woman. But I don't know if you're familiar. Are you familiar with the movie Ordinary People? Where Mary Tyler yes. Moore yelled yes. at, uh, I think it was Timothy Hutton, and said, give him the goddamn camera. When they were trying to take a family picture with Tim, uh, with uh, Donald Sutherland and Timothy Hutton and taking the picture. So I got to see that person for one minute. We were doing a scene. I, I just kind of lost track for that one moment in time doing the scene. And I kept coming in and screwing my line. I've been coming and screwing my line. And then she just goes, can we just take, she tells the director, we're just going to take a break for a second. She goes, come here for a second. She puts her arm around me. We kind of walk out the door and she goes, get your act together. <laughs> At 13, Hollywood and Levine, the podcast from this week's special guest, Ken Levine. Ken, you and your writing partner, David Isaacs, have worked on so many sitcoms. What was the first long running show you worked on? Because our first staff assignment was on the Tony Randall show. Okay. Which was for MTM. Yeah. And <laughs> it's a funny Tony Randall story that people in England will appreciate. So we write a script freelance for the Tony Randall show. And they liked it so much that they invited us to join the staff, which was great. Yeah. You know, and this is your first staff job, too. So. This is our first staff job, and it's MTM. It's Camelot. <laughs> this fan and we're writing for Tony Randall. I, oh, my God. Yeah. So the first day we come on the stage, the cast gathers together to have a table reading where they all read the script out loud. And there had just been a one-week hiatus prior to this. And they're doing our script. So cast is sitting around the table and the writers were all sitting around the table and tony says well, before i start i i'd like to say something during the hiatus week i went to london and while in london i got a chance to watch some of the british sitcoms of the day and after watching those i can say conclusively that the stuff we do here in america is shit. <laughs> okay, now let's read The Tony Randall Show by Ken Levine and David Isaacs. Piper Terrett from the Lockdown Lowdown podcast. Your mum has a funny word for Google, doesn't she? Goggly eye. Have you looked that up on goggly eye? <laughs> <laughs> goggly eye makes more sense because you're looking for something. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. I always thought eBay had the wrong name. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's not a bay. Why isn't no. it called eBid? It's a bloody auction e site. You got so close. Yeah, it, should it should be called yeah. eBid. But, I mean, uh, people call it flea bay, <laughs> don't they? They call it flea yeah. bay. <laughs> well, I call, what's it? Um, what's the one I had an issue with when they put my house, for, 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 for my, put my flat for rental oh, on it? What was that? Yeah, yeah, 
yeah. yeah. Mug tree. Yeah. Mug tree. Gum yeah. tree. Yeah. yeah mug tree. It's the mugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I call fa- Facebook a faceache. Yeah, I call it faceache as well. Do you? Yeah. There's two things I want to do. First of all, I want to have a social me- an anti-social media website yes. where you can put lists of people on there that you don't want to bug you <laughs> and call it <laughs> Get Out of My Facebook. <laughs> and the other one I want to do is combine YouTube, Spotify, Twitter and Facebook, I want to combine them into one giant time-wasting website called You Spotty Twit Face. <laughs> Back to the chart now, and we're up to number 17, which is The Harrowing. A once-in-a-century storm hits a remote Scottish island. As the isolated community takes shelter, a barbaric crime sets off a chain of events which heralds the rise of an ancient evil and threatens to change the course of history. It stars the Golden Globe winner Joanne Froggart as Police Sergeant Jackie O'Hara. It's an eight-part supernatural thriller and it's created by the acclaimed writer and director Mark Healy. And will you knock it off with the bagpipes? We had this last week. Goodness me. Thank you. Side note here, a lot of people think the bagpipes are Scottish. They're not. They were invented by the Irish, and they were sold to the Scots as a joke. The Scots still haven't got that joke. Ken Levine, you're a writer, director, and producer, and you've even done a bit of acting on The Simpsons. Oh, man, I did everything on The Simpsons, Graham. I did everything on The Simpsons. I'm also kind of an amateur cartoonist. Really? And it was an episode called Dance and Homer. Wait. A few YouTube people. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Dance and Homer holding it up. Podcast people have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> held up a Dance and Homer doll. Yeah. He becomes a, a mascot for the minor league team, and he gets to move up to the major leagues to substitute for the Capital City Goofball. And I designed the Capital City Goofball. You designed it? I designed it, yeah. Wow. And they used my design. So it was like, oh, man, there's like a cartoon character. And for the minor league team, they wanted to have an announcer. So I said... Uh, I'll announce. I'll, you know, <laughs> you got the experience. I got the experience. I'll do it. So I am the voice of the Springfield Isotopes. There's some nut down in right field dancing up a storm. He's really got the crowd going. Let's see if it can shake up mediocre slugger Big Bill McCloskey. Swung on and belted to deep left field. It's going, going. It's going. certainly exciting the chicago broadcasting legend jonathan brandmeyer there we go brother the mac attack is on there he is okay i can take these off hold on there you go g mac i should talk about the first time we met it was it, okay. it was i'm gonna say that it was a boot camp yeah, it was, that that's is? it it was 2015 it was a thing called the morning show boot camp it was in a hotel in chicago i forget which one yeah and you were about to do your syndicated show on westwood one mm-hmm. and so they had this room full of radio people from all over the world yeah. mostly the u.s and canada and uh, Mike McVeigh, who was boss of Cumulus, who owned Westwood One, I think, was he, he was putting on a session. Yeah. He was putting on a session to introduce us to Jonathan Brandmeier because you're about to do this new syndicated show. Mm-hmm. And so we're all there, and it's the last day of the conference. And the conference had been plagued, as radio conventions usually are, with bad sound from the <laughs> from the believe. from the yeah right yeah, yeah so. Yeah. The, the the sound is bad and, and Mike is doing this whole big intro about Johnny B and Radio Legend and Hall of Fame and the whole thing and the mic's cutting in and out and stuff yeah. and then mm-hmm. a heckler at the back of the room starts abusing 
uh, Mike McVeigh, who's like one of the main people in in the U.S. radio, one of the main figures who 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 runs a group of radio stations, and this guy's going, "This is ridiculous. This is supposed to be. This is supposed to be a, an audio thing, and you can't even get the sound right. And what's going on here? Whatever." And he walks up to the stage, and everyone in the room's going, "Like, wow, this is really embarrassing." And it was you. <laughs> well, Graham, isn't that a fact? Here, here's a guy who's <laughs> he's not fired, who's supposed to be, and who isn't, who's supposed to be in, in radio. We're in radio. These are conventions, Graham says. It's a radio convention of radio people who do radio, which I believe, if I am correct, it's audio. Audio. Yeah. And he's up there. Anyway, I want to know. <laughs> What the hell is going on? And I hate long introductions. I hate any of that stuff anyway. I'm not comfortable with any of that. And you know that I was asked to do that. It was called for ladies and gentlemen who are not in the business. It's like a boot camp. And you're supposed to go there and tell people how to do radio or whatever it is. And I, yeah. It's, they would ask me a lot, almost every year, every other year. Could you just come and talk? to? I said, that is so arrogant, arrogant for me to stand up there and tell you in the audience how to do a radio show. Because if you're really doing a radio show or in this case, a podcast or a stream or whatever it is you do these days, you just got to do what's in your head. Don't let anyone tell. Why would Jonathan Brandmeier tell you how to do a radio show? I don't know. Shit. I just well, well, we, we, well, we wanted to hear from someone who's a Hall of Famer. We wanted to hear a guy who's won Marconi Award. We wanted to hear from you, Johnny. But you could, uh, and yeah. to, to this day, <laughs> it's the only time I've been to an event where the star of the event has been heckled by himself. <laughs> you you heckled your own show. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen that before. That's how smart I am. <laughs> I <just> heckled my <laughs> own self. <laughs> 